near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Happy Monday, all you mentees. Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Daredevil Omnibus Volume 3 from Marvel Comics. So, let's go ahead and get started. And before going any further, a big thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks of Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on April 9th or 10th, depending on where you get your books. And what we're looking at here is the direct market cover. This is the one that's supplied by John Ramita. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover. That's the one that's going to be available everywhere. That one's supplied by Rich Buckler. But everything underneath the dust jacket is identical. So we are going to shift the focus back to the direct market cover. So as this cover suggests, this is the era where Black Widow joined Daredevil. And it was like a buddy cop, well, I guess a buddy cop with a love interest type of stories that are gonna be collected in here. Although issue 99 does start something new. Now, if you probably notice how thick this omnibus is, it is. Let's look at it compared to volume two. So here it goes right between Volume 2 and the Frank Miller Omnibus. And of course they haven't reprinted Volume 1 yet. But we still got a couple more volumes in between these. But yes, this is a lot thicker. This actually collects four Marvel Masterworks. Which we haven't seen in a long time. Usually they stick to two. Most of the time it's three Masterworks. But this is thicker than a snicker, baby. Uh, here's the back of the book showcasing the artwork of all the covers and the ISBN, what's collected in the omnibus, and the retail price being $125. Let's look at it underneath the dust jacket and look at the flaps first. Daredevil and Black Widow unite. And on the right-hand side is a little bit of the bio of the creators here. And sadly, a lot of these creators are gone now. And underneath the dust jacket is Daredevil, the Man Without Fear, Omnibus. And that image right there, Volume 3, Conway, Gerber, Colin, Heck, and Brown. And the Daredevil logo. Alright, what we're going to do is crack this open, showcase the artwork, and talk about some of the stories collected in here as well as the creators. And of course, look at the back matter to see what kind of extras this big, thick book has. All right, let's go ahead and crack this omnibus open. Here are your end sheets and your title page, which of course has to have Black Widow because she played such an important part during this particular omnibus. Your creators and what's collected in here and people behind the scenes right here and this piece of Daredevil and your credits here are all of the main people that worked on this book like jerry conway and then steve gerber gene colin don heck bob brown john verportin sit shores tom palmer jack abel sam rosen art simak and uncredited of course because that was happening at the time they weren't crediting the colors so we're very lucky that a lot of this you know we found out who was the actual letter or sometimes inker or finisher and then your colors unfortunately didn't get a lot of the credit back then but we do have certain colorists like george russo's and stan goldberg during some particular issues and your editors at the time and you'll see when stan lee ends up leaving as the editor for Roy Thomas to take over. It's such an interesting, amazing time at Marvel Comics. Table of contents right here, telling you where you're going to have to go to what page to find a particular story. So you'll have the issue number, when it came out, and of course the title of the comic. And something you'll notice that I mentioned earlier, there are four introductions, four forwards in this book right here. And that's because this collects four Marvel Masterworks. So there are two introductions by Jerry Conway, and they tell you 
in the table of contents who does what introduction right here. So you have two by uh, Jerry Conway, one by John B. Cook, and one by Mary Screnz, who was the co-writer on a lot of the Steve Garber stuff. So this book collects Daredevil 75 through 119, Avengers 111, and the material from Amazing Adventures 1 through 8. The book has 1160 pages and it retails for $125. I love this introduction here by Jerry Conway. Talking about being a collector. This one hit close to home. How he was a collector. He collected single issues. He collected original art. And then at one point in his life, he just decided... It wasn't for him. He got old enough that he didn't want the stuff anymore, so he sold a lot of it, sold a lot of his original art. Kind of, in a way, broke my heart because I come from at it like a collector. But I understand where he's coming from. And he kept two pieces, uh, both of them featuring Black Widow, uh, one drawn by Gene Colan. So that's really cool that he got to keep those pieces. So what we have towards the very beginning of this omnibus are the eight Black Widow stories from Amazing Adventures, and each one ranging anywhere from eight to ten pages. And some of them are written by Gary Friedrich and then uh, Mimi Gold doing some of the stuff in here. And then some of it by Gene Colan, uh, John Buscema does a couple of parts. So also featuring, of course, the Inhumans. The letter pages are collected in here. And this was all part of the Black Widow omnibus, if you have that already. So yes, the letter pages are all collected in here, including, of course, the letter pages of Daredevil. All right. So once you get past these little short stories that feature Natasha Romanov, oh my goodness. And let me tell you, uh, there was a lot of this going on, especially with Gene Colan drawing uh, Natasha. Just where she's putting on her outfit or taking it off. They knew their target audience back then. And they knew them well. Because that just kept happening over and over. So then we kick off with the Daredevil era. And this is the Daredevil era before the pre-Widow era. So we have El Condor that shows up through here. And by now Jerry Conway is the main writer after Roy Thomas took a break to go do some other work. Because he was about the only writer at Marvel after Stan decided to take a step back. And featuring the characters of Karen Page. There's the fight here between Namor with the team up with Spider-Man through here. Uh, we have a couple of two-parters right here. And the introduction of the Man Bull in this particular storyline in issues 78 through 79. And in that introduction... Gene Colan was talking, or I'm sorry, Jerry Conway was talking about how proud he was of creating that particular character. The Owl comes back for another two-parter storyline uh, that leads into this right here, this issue 81. And this is the issue that introduces us to the concept of Black Widow being Daredevil's kind of partner in crime. She saves him from drowning, and it's very interesting because the way she reacts to saving him, she feels like, oh, he's not really, like, he, he's not appreciative of me saving him. Is it because I'm a woman? And there's a lot of that going on. There's a mastermind that is behind the scenes through these issues. And it's like a twist of who they're working for. But they're, the evil mastermind is also working for another mastermind. This is the fight against the Scorpion through here. And I'm not going to go through each and every one of these issues, I promise. But eventually, we do get to the point where Black Widow actually shares the title with Daredevil. So it becomes Daredevil and Black Widow. Because they've taken Karen Page kind of out of the equation for right now. Even though Karen Page does come back and she realizes... Oh, I love Matt, but he's never going to give up the life of being a superhero, so you can have him, Black Widow. It's almost like she owned Matt and he was okay to go. I found that very interesting. But yes, we do have a lot of Jerry Conway through these particular issues here. And a lot of beautiful Gene Colan artwork. I love when he's inked by Tom Palmer. So I think it's wonderful and I'm here for it. And... It's a lot of, like, tongue-in-cheek type of stories, uh, like, especially the the dialogue and the narration. I, I can see why some people didn't dig this stuff, and 
why I remember seeing in the comments why some people had a hard time going through some of those issues. But I kind of dug them. I think they're very charming. I've read a lot of this stuff already, thank goodness, in the epic format. So actually, I think most of the stuff I've read in the epic format already. That's the Return of Man Bull. And this is the introduction by John B. Cook. Talking about going from Roy Thomas to Jerry Conway. And then eventually leading into the uh, Steve Gerber era. And this is the Dark Messiah, which begins like this really interesting storyline that is about a cult and daredevil fighting a bunch of cultists and i guess that was what was popular at the time being in san francisco jerry conway actually talks about like going to california and living with harlan ellison for a while that's such a cool story i didn't know about that and it wasn't until i started reading that introduction that i found out about that uh now we're leading up to issue 100 here and this is issue 99 where Hawkeye comes back for Black Widow. So, yes, during this time, as you probably noticed, it is Daredevil and Black Widow. However, Steve Gerber wasn't the biggest fan of having Daredevil with a partner in crime in the book. So he wanted to kind of write her out of the story. And that actually starts happening here in the pages of Avengers with this Magneto fight where Black Widow takes on... The offer to join the Avengers. But for a while, it is still Daredevil and Black Widow. This is uh, issue 100 with, again, beautiful artwork by Gene Colan and retelling a lot of the origin of Daredevil. Now, unfortunately, Gene Colan doesn't stick around for the whole book, though, uh, because he does end up leaving and going to do other work. So you have some fill in artists, you have fill in writers too, like Chris Claremont with the return of the Stilt Man there. So through these issues, you're going to find the work of Don Heck and Rich Buckler, Sid Shores, Bob Brown, uh, Sam uh, Queskin comes in and does a couple of the issues. Craven the Hunter shows up here. And it's funny because Craven the Hunter doesn't really mention Spider-Man through here. And we do have this issue right here. This is really interesting because this is Madame McEvil's last appearance as Madame McEvil. And... Now, in this issue is where we first refer to her as Moon Dragon. So that will be her name from now on. And, of course, tie everything in to the whole Thanos and the cosmic universe, which is to come. And then it's not just the letter pages, but we also have this, a personal plea from your blush and bullpen. Talking about what other activities you're into, where you bought this comic book. It's like a Marvel comic survey that... It's just really cool that they kept that in there. So not just letter pages, but things like that are kept in here. So the more you read this, the more you could see that, yes, eventually Steve Gerber does get to write out Black Widow. So by the time you get to issues, I think it's like 108, if I'm not mistaken, it's the one that... Yes, this issue right here with the fight against the Beetle, you don't see Black Widow, her name on the title anymore. She still appears up there. And then she's gone. This is the fight against Necra right here. And you have the Screamer that shows up through these particular issues. And the first appearance of the Silver Samurai happens in this very omnibus right here with that issue. And Mandrill the Mutant. Not the only mutant that appears through here. Uh, we do have Black Widow come back from time to time. But also Gene Colan. This is the story with Shanna the She-Devil. That will take Daredevil out of his comfort zone. And then you have the Deathstalker storyline through here. Man-Thing. Gets into some interesting uh, territory. I really like the introduction here by Marie Skrenis. Talking about her friend Steve Gerber. And other things they talked about besides comics. Like what he was really interested in, like the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, uh, the Palestinian terrorists hijacking. You can, it, It's really interesting to see the behind the scenes and how she was talking about, he was finding a way to write about these things through his stories without being too much on the nose. And I mean, that's honestly a, the way that a lot of the writers wrote back then. They couldn't come out and just say how they were feeling without, you know, either getting blacklisted or being called out in the letter pages. But I found that really interesting, like the things that he was into. And you can definitely see it in his writing. 
And I believe it was John that mentioned that he wasn't about revenge, but he was about justice. I like that because that's the way he writes his characters. So you do have, like I mentioned, Gene Colan come back from time to time. Chris Claremont writing some fill-in issues. And Jerry Conway stepping in again from time to time. I love the way that they were collaborating back then. Uh, because somebody was either running late or because maybe they were working on another project. They would always have like a backup script ready to go because they were done doing reprints. They didn't want to do any more reprints of issues uh, because that's what they were doing at at the early start of Marvel. Whenever they were starting the Silver Age, they would reprint an issue with a new cover because they were just running that far behind. So what we have here after the last letter page are the extras. This is the cover to annual number three. And this is by John Romita and Frank Jaikoya. And again, reprinting Daredevil 16 through 17. And then they stopped that reprint and started tell, uh, telling their own stories. Oh my gosh. Original art here by Gene Colan and Bill Everett. Don Heck and Bill Everett. Gene Colan and Tom Palmer, which were my favorite combo. I love that painted pencil look to it. And Tom just really, oh my gosh, embellishing all that beautiful artwork so these were copies of daredevil 100 that were given out by rolling stone magazine to promote their appearance in that issue this is a john romita and mike esposito cover bob brown and paul gulachi bob brown and don heck and there's the silver samurai first appearance oh and this is the cover production photo stat shows the original poses for the mandrill and the hench women that is one creepy character or at least I always thought so. And then your end sheets. The book has 1160 pages, has sewn binding, and that's what the eye looks like. We've seen bigger, and we've also seen smaller. This one printed at the iMac printer, but something I immediately noticed is the thickness of the paper stock. It's glossy paper, and it's thicker than the paper stock they've used in the past, even just in the last couple of months. Uh, so the bleed through, that you would normally see on light pages like this or the light colors is very minimal compared to the way that it used to be let's look over here like we're looking at a white page and you can tell but you gotta be really looking for it uh, at the words yeah on that side right there wanted to show what the spread pages look like even though this one's cheating a little bit because of the way the frame is around the page so there's really no gutter loss so let's Look at an example where there is no frame around it. So you can see the type of gutter loss you're going to get, which is very minimal, but still there nonetheless. And that's because of the eye and the build of the book. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. BD Cosmos, the Canadian leader in graphic novels. They have a physical storefront in Montreal, Quebec, and their website, bdcosmos.com, offers 25% off your order of over $99 or more and free shipping everywhere in Canada for every order of $200 or more. Their shipping care is exceptional. Your books will stay cozy through the rough Canadian weather and arrive to you in... Near Mint Condition! After checkout, let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way and you'll be added to the monthly $25 gift card raffle. Entries are valid for new and returning customers. Don't be afraid to call or email them. Ask them questions. Their staff is always happy to help guide you towards the right purchase. Visit their website, bdcosmos.com for more. B. D. Cosmos. With rewards and raffles taking care of customers in Canada. A. Eh? CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking this up, if you have the first two volumes, if you hope they reprint volume one, if you've read the stuff in here, what you think about the particular stories, what your favorite story out of this omnibus is, or if any of this is your first Daredevil comic, 
What other Daredevil collections would you love to see collected in omnibus format? <clears throat> and a Cinti, one day, one day. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. Check us out on Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.